felice.
too much for us Amen. Hallelujah. Right now I'd like to call up Sister Melissa. Let us have her as she comes forward, Bazalwan.
Let us perfect our offering and pray over our offering and just be grateful unto God. 
In Jesus' name, let us pray. Amen. Amen. Jesus, my name, we pray. May come forth into a power of life.
a week before, a week after I made my sacrifice, they came back to me again. Clap hands for Jesus, brother. Clap hands. Amen. So I've been wanting, I've been wanting to to be a tailor. Amen. Amen. So like I, I didn't have uh, much finances to to go to, to go and do a course. Amen. So I told them I want to to do a course for sewing. And then the the, the next following week they they came with the forms and they said we got the school for you. We are going to pay you. Woo! So there had been delay for about a year and a half. Yes. Then when you raised your sacrifice, everything was settled. Amen. Clap hands for Jesus. There is power here. Amen. So I'm going to start my course on the 3rd of October this, this month. Amen. 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 Clap hands. Clap hands for the Lord. My sister, please share with us your name and tell us what God has done for you. My name is Yolanda Mouye. This person has helped. I need your manifestations. Okay. Mm, last <coughs> month, I uh, had a result for the family in the middle of us at the same time, but nothing to do with the temporary of mine. As my result, maybe it was two weeks after that. Well, just in the old job for my way, I saw the experience. And then so it's a hard as I was doing it, I never was trying to I was afraid to be my daddy. It was all cool in my lap. It was all cool in my lap. I was cold. So what I feel about it, what I train, what I need to do, what I need to do, what I need Yes, I did. Clap hands for Jesus, Amen. 
see that there is power in this place. Amen. Amen. I bless the name of God for all the prayers for me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. My brother, please share with us your name and tell us what God has done for you. Amen. 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 Okay, before I give my testimony, because I'm seeing some of you guys are seated here, yeah, but you guys have a testimony. The fact that you are here, you may speak to you guys. And the fact that you guys are seated here, it is a testimony in the call. Amen. Amen. So you guys also have a testimony. Okay, so my other testimony, a part of that, you can hear me speak, is that. Um, uh, so there is this there is this thing that they call COVID COVID nineteen COVID nineteen. Okay, okay. Um, what I do for a living? I'm a musician for a living. So sometime in March, all things were closed and all no gigs, no whatsoever. But I would like to thank God that uh, there was a company that is. Uh, that needed musicians. Actually, that needed me by that time. Okay. I would like, uh, like to thank God that the fact that when some people were losing jobs in mm -hmm. all the same month when COVID 19 started, that's when I got employed. Amen. Up until now. Okay. At some point, there were struggles here and there, and they were failing to pay us. So I tell those people that, hey, she's now, you guys will pay us late and all, you understand? So I used to pray to God and say, God, may I find favor with you and also favor with men. Amen. Okay? I then tell the people that, oh, you know what, this thing of late payments and all, and I still have to pay rent whatsoever. When they check their pre payroll, in my salary, what they did after it wasn't a good thing. So they're like, I know we're paying you late at home. So the thing is, it's better we give you an apartment for you to stay at. So I'll, I'll stay in of somewhere else. But now they gave me an apartment to be the <laughs> master. <laughs> <one. laughs> Like, okay. So the thing is, you remember there was that first one in 2020 in March, and it went through. Then this time around, when it was the second, the third, whatever, third, what, 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 lockdown thing, when other people are losing their job, that's when I'm being given a place to stay, I know when I'm becoming a standard. I like to thank God that I'm finding famous. With God and also favor with men. Amen. Amen. So it's also a testimony to you that you could hear me. You are alive. Amen. 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 So I also have a testimony. My name is Felicia. Amen. So on, uh, I think, yeah, it was two months back when it was a prophetic service, an online prophetic service. After, just before it happened, I was talking to the man of God that Sunday that I don't know the sex of my child and I required it to be a certain sex for certain reasons. So he told, I asked him, what is God saying or what is the sex? <laughs> the prophet didn't answer me. So I was like, okay, if that's like that, then on Thursday, it was a prophetic service. Then he told me that um, as he was prophesying, he sees a boy. And at that time, I thought, no, man, I want to get again. So he told me that I had seven days to pray to, in order to receive the girl that I'm praying, that I say I want. So after that, I then decided, no, man, I'm sure this is what God has given me. Let me just settle for that. So two weeks back, when I went for a scan, I found out that indeed it is a boy. Amen. So I had to thank God for that. Then, Two days back, like I had been stressing about finances, 
that um, sort of running behind schedule for the things I wanted to do at a certain time. So um, I was in a conversation with uh, men, on a phone call with Men of God, and he said he reminded me of his message on Sunday. He said that uh, remember not to place your 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 faith in men but in God. So I was like, I, okay, that given or saved. So yesterday I go to this person, I'm like, ah, this is what is being planned, and this is how behind I am. Mind you, this person had told me days before that he doesn't have a certain amount of cash. But just after I told him all these things, he just gave me the amount that I needed or wanted at the time. So I'd like to thank God for that. Amen. My sister, please share with us your name and tell us what God has done for you. There is grace in this house. There is grace in this house. Uh, my name is Vicky. Uh, on the top of September, I went to Men of God. Um, I was selling a livestock, and then I went, these people, they were taking time, like, to go and see the livestock, they were taking their time. I went to, I went to Men of God on the top of September, and then he prayed. And then when I get home, I draft a calendar, because Men of God said, within 30 days, the last day will be sold. So I I I draft I a calendar and then each and every day I'll be ticking minus, minus, minus. So today when I was ticking the face, I was like, this month is a month of finances. So they have to buy this last job. And now, like during the service, I just got a message that they lack the last job and they are going to take it. Jesus. So it has manifested after contacting the man of God, it has manifested within 30 days. Yes. Clap hands for Jesus. There is power here. Amen. 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 May I ask that you all rise as you are about to pray. Now let us just begin to thank God for the testimonies that we have had shared. And let us pray that God will also give us the boldness or empowerment or the push to share what he has done in our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Let us pray. Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the works, for the wonders that you are doing in our lives, Lord, Lord, Jesus, Lord, Jesus, Lord, that we may testify of your goodness, that Lord, we may testify of the things that have been the life of Jesus, Lord, 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 Lord,
together it says who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or hallelujah let's take it one more time who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress Now look at your name and say, nothing will be able to separate you from the love of Christ. Now it's, it's, it is the sufficient grace conference that we've been doing this for some time now as I said to us yesterday. The sufficient conference, sufficient grace conference we've been having it. And each time we have it, we have about three days, sometimes seven days conference. And the message is always on grace. Amen. And we've been preaching the same grace message each time, each time for years. And we have not exhausted the message. And then we have not what? Exhausted. What we have not finished 
all the revelations of grace. Amen. And you listen to most of our teachings. We teach mostly on grace and faith. Amen. I think we are probably taught a thousand messages on faith. And last month, almost every service we had, the message was on faith. Amen. The whole of September. And each time we teach on it, it's something different. Each time we teach on it, it's something different. You cannot say no, but you taught on faith last week and you teach it again this week. It's not the same. Amen. And we thank God for those of you that receive the word and apply the word and we see testimonies in your life. Amen. How many of you were blessed by the testimonies of tonight? Amazing, amazing testimonies, right? Although I didn't hear most of them, but I know they were amazing. Look at you now and say amazing testimonies. Amazing. Now ask your neighbor, when are you testifying? When are you testifying? No, don't ask them like a joke. Look, look at them with a serious face. Say, when are you testifying? When are you testifying? Amen. Because if you've been serving God and you are not sharing testimonies, Something is not right. Amen. Let me look at someone. See, you are serving God. Yes. And you are not testifying. And you are not testifying. Something is not right. Something is not right. Are we together? Because we serve a God that does the impossible. We serve a God that is so great and so mighty. And it is impossible for him not to do something different in your life. Are you getting this? And if you've been around and you've not been testifying, after the service, you will testify. Amen. That amen is so weak. Amen. If you are here and you have not been testifying the way you would like to, this month will be full of testimonies for you. Amen. You can really shout a better amen. Shout aloud, amen. Amen. And as I was praying and asking the Lord, what do I talk about when we teach on grace? How do I attach the grace message this time? And the Lord said to me, teach on grace from the angle of love. Amen. amen. Look at someone say love. Love. Look at someone say love. Love. Look at someone say utan. Hallelujah. Amen. So I want you to understand this now. As we get uh, got into the word, Bible says, what shall separate us from the love of God? Amen. What shall separate us? I want us to understand that God's love is so strong. And it is something that is so strong that can hold you. It is stronger than any glue you can ever think of. Amen. God's love is stronger than boasting. God's love is stronger than super glue. His love is stronger than carpet glue. It's stronger than any kind of glue you can think of. Because when the love of God holds you, nothing is able to separate you. Are you getting this? And God wants us to get a certain revelation of that love. Because as I said to us always, it is only the sign of God you know that will work for you. Are you getting this? And God is doing something I can call damage control. Are you getting this? Because so many Christians have been taught wrong. Are you getting this? So many Christians have been what? Taught wrong. We have been taught something very wrong about God. And it now makes it difficult to receive from God. It makes it difficult to have an encounter with God. For those of us that were with, with us at the service we had on Sunday, I said something to us. I said that in my experience, you know, with serving God and doing ministry full-time, I have discovered 
that it is easier to pray for an unbeliever to get a miracle than for a Christian. Are you getting this? It is easier when I meet someone who uses motive, who doesn't believe in God, who doesn't go to church, and they are sick, or they are crippled, or they are blind, or they have a kind of problem, it's easier for them to get instant miracles than Christians. Are you getting this? What is the reason when I said to us on Sunday, it's not that they have more faith. No. It's that the Christians have gotten to a point of familiarity with God. Amen. They have become too familiar that they think they know how God operates. And therefore, it becomes hard to receive. But someone who is an unbeliever has not been fed so much wrong teaching. So much wrong information. Are you getting this now? So I said to us, God is, is, is working on damage control because he's trying to get so many Christians to renew their mind. He's trying to get us to see him in a different light and understand him as, or understand him the way he really is. And what we need to understand tonight is that God is a God of love. And you cannot fully embrace and understand grace until you understand love. Yeah. Are you getting this? Because to understand grace, you need to understand love. It's your understanding of his love that makes you bold enough to rest in his grace. I wish you get it. Yeah. Psalms 91, the Bible says from verse 1, he that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwells where? In the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow. He that dwells, he that rests in the secret place of the Most High. Amen. He that does what? Rest. Amen. For you to be able to rest, you need to have built some kind of trust in that person or in that thing. Are you getting this? Now, so many of you, if not every one of you here, you walked into this place right? And you went this direction and you saw all these seats. And what did you do? You sat on it. Now I can, I can boldly say none of you actually pressed the seat to see if it can carry your weight. Are you getting it? Yeah. You walked in and you saw the seat and you said to yourself or you knew within yourself that if the seats are set up the way they are set up, they can carry your weight. And you just sat on it. Right? Some of you sat on it because of experience. You have sat on so many chairs and they did not break. Are you getting this? So now because of experience, you have trust in the seat. That's why you are seated so comfortably on that seat. Are you getting this? But if you came in here and you found those chairs, they set up a crash. You know those tiny plastic chairs, right? You're not just going to walk up and sit on them. How would you get You're going to examine them to make sure it will fit. Some of you will not sit on it. You say, I will understand. Are you getting this? Why? Because you do not trust. And where there is no trust, there is no rest. Look at someone say it's good preaching. Where there is no trust, there is no rest. I can stop here and share the grace. Amen. Where there is no trust, there is no rest. I'm going to say it five times so that when you are sleeping, you, you hear my voice in your sleep. Where there is no trust, there is no rest. Let me 
become the sign. Where there is no trust, there is no rest. How many times have I said it now? Hmm? Five. Okay, let's say it again. Where there is no trust, there is no rest. Where there is no trust, there is no rest. Are you getting this? Now, if you are here, I'm giving us examples. If you are here as a parent in this place, right? And you have a two-year-old child here. And then your two-year-old child walks out that door. Five, ten minutes, fifteen minutes, and the child didn't walk back in. Are you going to be comfortable? No. As a parent, you will start panicking, where is my child? And you're going to get up to go look for your child. Are you getting this? But the same parent, now that two-year-old child has grown to 20 years. The child walks out 20 minutes. Right? You're not going to be as concerned. Why? The child is old enough to take care of himself. Right? So when you trust the ability of the older child, you are at peace. You know, no, my child is fine. Even though he's not here, I know he's fine. Amen? But you don't trust that a two-year-old has the ability to take care of himself. That's why you panic. And you get this now. So in the same way, as a child of God, you find yourself in a particular situation. Because you don't trust that God loves you enough, you are panicking. Because the reason you are panicking is you are thinking, what if I don't come out of this situation? Are you getting this? What if this continues for so long? So you are not at peace, you are not resting because you don't trust God's love. Are you getting this? Because if you trusted his love, you will know that what he said in his word is true. Amen. If you trusted his word, his, his love, you would understand that he says that I will deliver you. Are you getting this? He said in his word that even though you go through the fire, it will not burn you. It's in his word. But immediately... We are faced with a challenge and you have not even gone through the fire. You are just seeing smoke. You start to panic. Are you getting this? You start to what? Panic. Because you no longer remember to trust in his love. So that scripture says, what shall separate us from the love of God? And before we dissect it further, let's go to the book of John. Turn to John. I want to show you something. We're talking about grace here. Turn to John. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. John then shall be mad. And that even is being in the end of the day. If you are right. All right, let's read together now. I'm going to read. We're going to read together. I read verse 1. You read verse 2. I read 3. You read 4. And then we get to verse 11. We'll read together. Are you ready? All right, verse 1 says, Jesus went out to the Mount of Olives. Verse 2. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in Now Moses and the Lord commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, 
he that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Verse 8. And they which heard it being convicted by their own conscience went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst. Verse 10. She said, No man, Lord, and Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Look at your neighbor and say, His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. Or look at someone and say, His grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. I'm going to explain this to us. The Bible says that this woman, now I'm sure most of us have heard this teaching so many times. But if you follow us on, on, on Facebook, there is a monthly, there is a, a one monthly post that we updated that said, if you hear a certain word over and over again, it means that that word has not yet registered or, or it, it has not begun to bear fruit in you. So God will create a situation for that word, that teaching to be repeated so that it bears fruit and produces for you. Are you getting this now? So the Bible says this woman was caught in adultery. Now, can we all agree that adultery is wrong? Yes. Do we agree? Yes. Right? Now, adultery simply means that this woman was married. Are you getting this? She was what? Married. And she was busy with somebody that was not her husband. Now, I want you to understand this. When we teach the message of grace, people who do not have revelation misunderstand grace as a license to sin. Rather, grace is an empowerment to stay away from sin. Are you getting this now? It is what? An empowerment. So I want you to get this. So Ram says this woman was caught in adultery and they brought this woman to Jesus. And Jesus was minding his own business and they brought her and cast her down in front of Jesus. Are you getting this? And I want you to understand, one of the things you need to understand, when they cast this woman down, there was no record in the Bible that said she got her. Are you getting this? Are you here? There was no record when the Bible says she got her when she was cast down. So when she was thrown down at the feet of Jesus, she remained at a prostrated position. And you only prostrate for someone who you perceive as royalty. Are you getting this? So this people's persecution brought the woman into a position of worship. Their persecution did what? Brought this woman into a position of worship. There are people that are attacking you and they have no understanding that the more they are attacking you, they are pushing you closer and closer to the Lord. Amen. Are you getting this? There are some of you sitting here, you know this, that because of those challenges that you've been facing, now you cannot go to bed without praying. Are you getting this? So that challenge that you are facing is actually, in, when you look at it from a different perspective, is a blessing in disguise. Because someone says it's getting good. It's a blessing in what? In disguise. Are you understanding this now? When I, when I check the word of God, is it 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 12 or chapter 12 verse 9? Right? It says, and he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is what? Made perfect in weakness. Are you getting this? My grace is what? Sufficient. When you read the, the basis of that story, when you read the full story around that, the Bible says there was some, there's a certain thorn in the flesh of God. Are you getting this? A thorn in his Flesh. And I've explained this before. What does a thorn in his flesh mean? 
What does it mean? Paul was sick? A lot of people preach the gospel and they say, no, even Paul was sick. Amen? A thorn in the flesh does not mean there was something in his body. Are you getting this? Ask me how do I know. I'll tell you tomorrow. So what does it mean? There is something called idiom. Amen? I've explained this before. In English language, it's just very obvious in English language. A thorn in the flesh simply means an annoying person. That's what it means. A thorn in the flesh does not mean a literal thorn. It means someone who is co consistently bothering you. Are you getting this? Some of you ladies, you have some men that are a thorn in your flesh. Those men, that every time they see you, they are asking you out, and you don't see anything you like in them, and they are persistent, and it's annoying you. Are you getting this? So they have become what? A thorn in your flesh. There are some of you here that is that person who always calls you to ask for money. The other person, right? Every time they call you, they want money. And when you are in need and you ask them, they don't give you. Are you getting this? But they're always calling you, asking for money. So they have become a thorn in your flesh. So Paul said, there was a thorn in my flesh. And three times I've asked the Lord and said, Lord, take this away from me. Three times. And God did not. And God responded and said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. You know what God was saying to him? God was saying this. He's saying there is a purpose for this thing you are experiencing. There is a purpose for this thing you are experiencing. Are you getting this? I want us to understand God does not cause us pain. But God can use our pain. Are you getting this? God will not intentionally cause you pain. But when pain comes, God can use that pain to work out a testimony. There was a certain man, the Bible says that he was born blind. Remember? In the book of John, the Bible says, when the disciples saw this man, they asked Jesus, why was he born blind? Is it his sin or his parents? And Jesus said, none of this. But I said, because of what has happened to this man, you will see the glory of God. Are you getting this? So Jesus was saying, I'm going to use the pain of this man to work out a miracle. God is working a miracle for you tonight. Amen. This month, your life will not be void of miracles. Amen. If you believe it, shout a better amen. Amen. So he said to him, God said to Saul, to Paul, he said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when you think you are weak, I'm actually strong in you. Are you getting this now? So these people began to accuse this woman in John chapter 8. They began to accuse her and they brought her before Jesus. They were persecuting her. Now let's go back to Romans. If you are still in Romans chapter 8. Now read for me verse 13. Which verse do you read? Verse 37? 35. 35. Now read it, read it for me again. What does it say? What? One more time. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Uh -huh. Shall the tribulation or the distress or persecution Hold on. Tribulation, distress, or persecution. Are you getting this? Every time you see distress, every time you see tribulation, every time you see persecution, do not be moved. God's love still covers you. Are you getting this now? God's love still covers you. So the Bible says here, this woman has been persecuted and they brought her to the feet of Jesus, accusing her. And saying, she did this, she did that. And the Bible says something. You've been reading this, but you probably have not seen this. Now let's go to the same book of John, there chapter 8. And the Bible says,
Verse 4. They say, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Verse 5. Now Moses and the Lord commanded us that, that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? Now let's read verse 6 together. This is a say, tempting him that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Are you getting this? Now I don't know the kind of Bible that you use but in my Bible here there is something the Bible says and with his finger he wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. The last five words were written in italics in my Bible. Amen? I'm using the original King James uh, version. Is it the same in your Bible? As though he heard them not. And the last five words were written in italics. Amen? And what is the number five? What does it represent? Grace. Okay, what does it represent? Grace. Grace. Now those five words, when we take them and speak them alone, what does it say? Though he heard them not. You haven't got it. Let me come the side. Let's take those five words again. Though he heard them not. of Jesus. Now the, the last five words. Though so all this while they were accusing the woman. Guess what happened? Jesus heard them not. You know what it means? It entered one ear and it left with through the other ear. And you get this? When they were accusing the woman. When people persecute you so much Sometimes, even when you were wrong, but because of the magnitude of the persecution, God turns a deaf ear to their accusation. God does what? He turns a deaf ear to their accusation of persecution. Are you getting this? Now, you did something wrong. Are you here? You did something wrong and you know you did something wrong and you are now at the feet of Jesus amen at the feet of Jesus in, in, in a place of, of remorse you did something wrong and you are sorry for what you did and you are in the presence of the Lord God Almighty and people are still blaming you persecuting you accusing you for the thing that you did wrong and because of the magnitude of the persecution, Jesus just turns a deaf ear. And their persecution begins to take no effect on you. And you're getting this now. Now the Bible says, and Jesus stood and began to write on the ground as though he heard them not. And they continued. Are you getting this now? They continue, and, and the next Bible says, Jesus lifted up his, 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 his eyes towards them, and he said something. He said, He without a stone, He without a sin, cast the first stone. Is that correct? And the Bible says, He bent down again and began to continue writing. Are you getting this? Now, what does the Bible say happening next? <coughs> what does the Bible say happening next? They were convicted, right? And they began to leave one by one from the oldest to the youngest. And what happened after? Read for me. What happened next? Jesus lifted up himself. Jesus lifted up himself, huh? Hold on. 
Jesus did that himself. Uh huh. And so none but the woman. Now we should get this. Get me another translation. Where's another translation? Jesus stood up and said to me. Jesus stood up and said unto her. All right, get me another translation too. Straightening up, Jesus said to her. Straightening up, Jesus said. So is anyone with a new King James? NKJV. Anyone?
He's not giving you grace because you are you are you are strong, you are prayerful. He's giving you grace because of his love. Are you getting this now? Amen. But he wants something from you. Psalm 91 says, He that dwells in the secret place, he needs you to come to the place of rest. Rest. And then his grace overflows. Are you getting this? But when you are in constant labor, in constant thought, trying to make it happen by your own strength, guess what happens? Grace does not abound. Are you here? Because you are thinking by your own strength, you can make it happen. Romans chapter 8. This. That's it, three. Read for me if you're there. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? Continue. It is God who justifies. It is God who what? Justifies. Who shall pray? Look at your neighbor. Say, I am God's elect. I am God's You're not saying, but look at someone say, I am God's elect. I am God's elect. Look at someone say, I am God's elect. I am God's elect. Are you getting this? Who can bring a charge against God's elect? Verse 37 of Lamentations chapter 3, the Bible says, Who is it? That decrees a thing and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it. Are you getting this? Who is it that decrees a thing and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded? Who is it that will say you will be buried and it comes to pass when God has not commanded it? We should get this. Who is it that says you will not make money when God has not commanded it? Who is it that says you will continue to be broke when God has not commanded it? Who is it that says you will never get married when God has not commanded it? Who is it that said you will never graduate when God has not commanded it? Who is it that said you will never walk in divine health when God has not commanded it? Who is it that said you will not receive that promotion when God has not commanded it? Who is it that said you will never have peace when God has not commanded it? It will not come It will not come to pass. And the reason it won't come to pass is because God's love is like a glue that binds you to him. Are you getting this? And when these battles are coming and those persecutions are coming, his grace shows up for you. And I said to us, Psalm 91 says, he that dwells in the secret place. And I remember what the word says about the ark of the covenant. Are you ready for this? The Ark of the Covenant. Now in the Old Testament, before Christ, there was something called the Ark of the Covenant. And that was something they built to represent the presence of God. To represent the glory of God. And the Ark represented the fullness of God. And it carried power. Are you getting this? I told us a story about when the Ark was about to fall and somebody touched it. And God struck them dead on the spot. Are you getting this? There was a certain city that took the ark of God. And the Bible says they opened the ark to look inside. Are you getting this? And the Lord killed hundreds of thousands of them in that city. Because they looked into the ark. Now, when you look at the ark of God, the way it is designed, the way it is what? Designed. Have you seen the ark of God? Have you seen the picture? You have? Anyone else see the picture of the ark in the Old Testament? All right. I'm going to show you sometime. Right? Now, when you look at that ark, there's a way it's designed. And on top of it, on top of it, it looks like a box. On top of it, something that looks like two angels. Are you getting this? Two angels. And now when you look at the bottom part, when you open at the bottom, something that is there 
is the tablet of stone. Amen. And the tablet of stone represent what? The law. Are you getting this? Represent what? The law. So on top of it, there are two angels and they sit in between. And that seat is called the mercy seat. Are you getting this? The mercy what? Seat. And the ark is supposed to be placed where? In the holy of holies. There is the outer court. There is the inner court. And there is the holy of holies. The most holy place where they put the ark of the covenant. And remember I said to us before that that ark of the covenant, or rather that holy, uh, most holy place, the holy of holies, they put a curtain. Remember? To close it, that nobody enters except the priest. Are you getting this now? And for the priest to enter, he has to purify himself for a very long time. And after purification, when the priest is going into the Holy of Holies, what do they do? They tie a rope to his feet and hang some, you know, some bells or something on his feet. And then he walks in. So every time he's moving around in there, they can hear the sound of the bell. Are you getting the sound? They can hear the sound because no one enters there. And if he enters in there without being pure, guess what happens? God strikes him dead on the altar. Are you getting this? Not an unbeliever. A priest. Are you getting this? God strikes him dead there. And guess what they do? With the rope that they tied to his uh, leg, they begin to pull him out. Are you getting this? This is how sacred it was. Amen? So, the Bible now says, he that dwells in that sacred place. If you understand this, the ark is placed in this particular place and the ark represents two things. The tablets of stone, it's on the bottom of it. And the messy seat is on top of it. Are you here? The tablets of stone are where? The bottom. The messy seat is on top. Now, by revelation, what does that tell you? The tablet represents the law. The mercy seat represents grace, which is higher. Which is higher? Which is higher? Grace. A lot of Christians have been taught so much of the law, but they have not been taught grace. And you cannot please God except you understand grace. Are you getting this? Because you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that if you keep most of the law and fail one, you have failed all of the law. Are you getting this? Can I give you an example? Are you ready for this example? Now let's say, let's say you are on a journey <coughs> And you are you, you get to this point, and from here to this place is a very deep ditch, like a very big hole. Are you getting this now? A very big what? Hole. Right? So deep that when someone falls in, they cannot come out. And let's say this is a meter, or, or let's say it's five meters long and five meters wide. Are you getting this? Five meters long and wide. And we have two people and they get to this point and one person is overweight, right? Unhealthy, has never exercised a day in their life and cannot jump that much. And the other person is fit, exercises every day, and can jump. Are you getting it now? 
Now in the eyes of man, which one will jump in us? The one who's fit. Is that correct? Now let's say the one who is unfit. Now I said this is about five meters big. The one who is unfit can only jump two meters. Are you getting this? And now they jump two meters. Guess what happens? They fall in. Right? Now the other person is so fit. This is five meters. And he can jump far. But he can only jump 4.8 meters. Are you getting this? 4.8. And the fat one, and on feet, can only jump 2 meters. Now when both of them stand and jump, who jumps across? They are both dead. Are you getting this? This is the way it is in our walk with Christ. Some people are the unfit ones. Are you getting this? Everyone looks at them and condemns them. And some other people who believe they are better than everyone else, they are those that appear fit in the eyes of man. Are you getting this? But what they don't understand is that the ditch is too wide. No matter your fitness, you can't make it. Are you getting this? No matter how good you are, So that Christian who tries, who's a good person, goes to church every Sunday, prays every day, gives money every every morning they're going to work or they're coming from work, they're giving money to beggars. Every weekend you cook and you go to the, to the orphanages and you donate food and donate clothes. You are a very good Christian. And the other person is spending every other day in the club, drinking, smoking, doing all sorts of things. Both of them before God are the same. Are you getting this? Because the one that is an unbeliever and the one that is a Christian trying but is not doing everything without Jesus, they both are dead. Are you getting this? Without grace, they are both going to hell. Are you here? So what saves us is not what God made available and gave to us for free. Titus chapter 2 verse 11, the Bible says, the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared unto all men. This grace was made available to every one. The unbeliever, the half-believer, the complete believer. It's made available to everyone and all God requires from you is to receive it and trust it. Are you getting this? To receive it and what? Trust in it. Are you getting this? So when you receive, how do you receive it? You have to realize that by your own strength you can't make it. You have to realize that your efforts are not enough. You have to realize that nothing you can do could be enough. Many people say, no, I have, I, I have kept the Ten Commandments. But the Ten Commandments are not all that God said you should keep. Are you getting this? There are about 613 laws that the Lord gave. And most of us here, we don't even know them. Are you getting this? Now, if you don't know them, how can you keep them? Are you getting this? So by your own strength, it is impossible. Hence grace is made available. So Jesus came and Jesus kept all the law. And what God wants us to do is to believe in Jesus who has kept all the law. Trust in his love for us. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish. So the damage control that God is trying to do is to renew your mind, to stop depending on your own strength, 
and start trusting in the love of God. Because when you trust and rest in His love, His grace abounds. Are you getting this? You trust and rest in His love, His grace abounds. That even when you are weak, He is strong. Are you getting this? When you cannot speak for yourself, He speaks for you. There are so many battles that we face on a daily basis that we don't even know about. Are you getting this? So many battles we are faced with we don't even know about. There are so many people who are fighting you that are physically stronger than you. Are you getting this? There are people fighting you that are wiser than you. That have more authority than you. There are people fighting you that are richer than you. They have more connections than you do. Are you getting this? But if you can rest in the grace of God, all those things they have become irrelevant. Because God's grace is sufficient. Are you here? So that woman that was on the floor, they persecuted her to the place of worship, to the place of surrender before the Lord. And their accusations began to make no sense to Jesus. Because this woman had embraced his grace. Held on to his love for her. And trusted in it. I want you to understand something as I round up. The Bible tells us about the disciples of Jesus, right? And how many disciples does the Bible does the Bible say he has? The, the closest was about 12. Right? Now, which was the disciple that claimed to love Jesus? Which one? Peter. Peter was the one that claimed to love Jesus. So he always relied on his love. When Jesus said, I'm going to the cross, he called Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. Are you getting this? Rebuking is a nice way of saying shouting it. He began to shout at Jesus and say, how can you say you're going to die? Say, don't say such things. Are you getting this? Because he did, he, 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 in other words, he's saying, I love you so much, I will not allow anything happen to you. Are you getting this? That's why when they tried to arrest Jesus, Peter came out with his sword. And I said to us, he tried to cut off the head of that man. But the man being so fast and swift was able to dodge and Peter sliced his ear like sliced bread. Are you getting it? And his ear fell off. Peter was acting out of his love for Jesus. But there was another disciple who understood Jesus' love for him. He never claimed to love Jesus. He only called himself the disciple whom Jesus loved. And what's his name? John. John. Are you getting this? Now when Jesus was leaving, I want you to understand something. Jesus called the disciple and said, they hated me, so they will hate you. They persecuted me. They will persecute you. Are you getting this now? We call the disciples of Jesus the, what's that word? M-A-T-Y-R. I believe I get that spelling. What do you call it? Matthias. Matthias, that word. Right? Now, those, Jesus, we call the disciples of Jesus those words. Why? Because they died for the faith. Are we together? So, there is something that we do not understand there. When we study the book of John, every time John does not like calling his name in the book of John. Are you getting this? Every time he said of him to write John, he said the disciple whom Jesus loved. In the world of today, you would have been angry at John. You think you are the only one he loves? I want you to understand, your work with God is personal. I don't care about your relationship with God. All I know is God loves me. Are you getting this? That's how you must be as a child of God. I don't care your walk with God. 
What I know is that he loves me. Are you getting this? So this was the mindset of John. And when Jesus told these guys that they're going to persecute you, they will do all these things to you. And when the time came, all the disciples were persecuted, including John. Are you getting this? But only John was not killed. Only John was not killed. He was the only disciple they could not kill. I wish you get it. They killed every disciple. Some were crucified up, upside down. Some were beheaded. Some were dragged to their death. They died terrible deaths. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Filled with the power of God. Except John, because he understood the love of God for him. And he rested in that love. And that love made grace abound. Are you getting this? Made grace abound. And John died at an old age. The only disciple. Because he rested in love. When you rest in love, Things that normally happen to people in your family, things that happen every generation, because you trust in God's love, it will keep you. Are you getting this? In what? If there is a death that is killing everyone, when it gets to your turn, it would happen. Trusting and resting in God's love makes it possible for some 91 to begin to manifest. A thousand may fall at your side. Ten thousand at your right hand. But it will not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see. And this is something that God has been trying or teaching me for a long time. And each year I understand it better and better and better. And I'm bringing the same knowledge to you that you get to understand it better and better each time. That his love for you is immeasurable. And if you can rest and trust in this love, these things, the enemies are trying to make you afraid of. God will take over that right And I, I, I say this prayer over you in the name of Jesus. That tonight, as you have received this word, you have received a different knowledge of God's grace. Amen. You have received a different knowledge of God's love. Amen. And from tonight, you are no longer bothered about the battles arrayed against you. Amen. Because you know that God's love for you will preserve you. Amen. God's love for you will give you victory. Amen. God's love for you will give you dominion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You that shall be better. Amen. Amen. Celebrate Jesus with a clap of faith and dance on your feet. Rise, let's rise. Look at someone and say, God loves me. God I want you to do a little exercise. Walk around to seven persons and tell them, God loves me. Walk around, look someone in the eye and tell them, God loves me. Walk around to seven persons, wrap it in their face. Tell them God loves me. Tell them about, I don't care what you think, but I know God loves me. I don't care what they said about me, but I know God loves me. I don't care what you see when you look at me, but I know He loves me. Walk around and tell somebody, I know He loves me. Walk around and minister to somebody. Speak into their life.
Because I will no longer be moved. Because now I know that He loves me. Do you believe that? I want you to believe this. Believe it in your heart. Believe it in your heart. I said, when you trust, what was that statement I made? When you trust, there's rest. Where there is trust, there is rest. Where there is trust, there is rest. So when you trust God's love for you, you begin to rest. If you are unemployed and looking for a job, you don't panic. You rest. Because you know he loves you. And because he loves you, he will provide. I wish you get this. Because he loves you, he will provide. If you are sick in your body, you don't panic. You know because he loves you, he will heal you. Are you getting this? Not because you fasted. Not because you are righteous. But because he loves you, he will heal you. Are you getting this? Because he loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, which is Jesus. And Jesus said about himself in John 10, verse 10, the thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. What is your definition of abundant life? Is there anyone who can tell us? Give us one word or two words. What's your definition of abundant life? More, more love. More love. Someone else? What's your definition of abundant life? Anyone? Affluence. Affluence. Right? Someone else? Tell us. What's your definition? When I say you're going to have abundant life, what comes to your mind? Too much. Excess. Overflow. Right? Too much money. Do you agree? Yes. Divine health. Right? Ability to have whatever you want. Are you getting this? For some people, it might not, maybe your faith is not at the ability to eat whatever you feel like eating whenever you feel like eating it. Mm. Are you here? Mm. You wake up in the morning and you just feel like toasted chicken. I don't know if there's any such thing. Not roasted chicken, but toasted chicken. There is, such thing. is there such thing? No. Toasted chicken. Now, you, you want to eat toasted chicken and you've never seen where it's sold. But because you are so loaded, you call your chef and say, I want toasted chicken. Now, it's not your problem whether it exists or not. It becomes the problem of the chef. Yeah. I think that is abundant life. Are you getting this now? This is what God wants for you. You want an outfit. Have you been to a wedding? When you look at that wedding invitation, they say, outfit for the day. Tota is brown. Mosquito yellow. Right? Weird colors. Now, you don't have to go to the market, to the mall, to start looking for such colors. You call your designer. Are you here? Yes. And say, I need mosquito yellow. <laughs> right? Zebra white. <laughs> and then, it is now the duty of the designer to go and look for those colors and make you an outfit. That is abandoned life. It is not abandoned life if everything you want, you have to go get it yourself. Yeah. I can get it. Yes. There are some of you who never rest. You 
wake up in the morning, you are the one that makes yourself up from bed, right? You are the one that dresses your bed. You are the one that has to sweep the floor. You go and do dishes, you make food, right? You run yourself a bath. You, you dress up, you are the one that carries yourself to work. If you don't request an Uber or go to, what you call it, Komba, no one is going to take you to work. Right? And if you decide to sit in the house, you won't get paid. So you are the one that does all those things. And you come back from work, you still have to do dishes, clean the house, and still have to take yourself to bed. Why will you not be tired? Are you getting this? This is the reason why people begin to look older than their age. You see a 40-year-old looking 70. Are you getting this? It's not their fault. It's because the abandoned life has not started manifesting. Are you getting this? So that is what God wants to give to you. And there is a reason he said this month of October is a month of explosive finance. Are you getting this? And it doesn't mean you have to work for it. It just means you have to rest in His love. Amen? He loves me, so He will make it happen. And you read Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He doesn't say I. No. He makes me like I'm in great passion. He he restores my soul. He leads me. So David put all the responsibility on God. He says, God, it's your, your burden. And as soon as we understand to cast our cares on him, we begin to enjoy abundant life. Are you ready for abundant life? Amen. Let's pray. Say, Father. Father. As I pray. As I pray. As I pray. As I pray. As I, pray. As I, pray. I boldly confess. I am tired, I am tired of, a normal life. of a normal life. I only confess. I, only I am tired, I am tired of, average. of average. I want abundance. I want abundance. I want abundance. I want abundance. In the name of Jesus. Say, my father, my father, as I pray, as I, pray I speak abundance, I speak abundance into, manifestation into manifestation in my marriage. In my marriage. I speak abundance. I speak into manifestation in my family. I speak abundance into manifestation in my business. I speak abundance into manifestation in my workplace. I speak abundance into manifestation in my health. I speak abundance into manifestation in my well-being. I speak abundance into manifestation in my soul, in my spirit, in my life, in my environment, in the name of Jesus, let your voice begin to pray. I speak abundance right now in my family. I speak abundance into manifestation in my health, in my finances. Let your voice suffer. Let your voice suffer. We're going to pray this moment. Let your voice suffer. Let abundance begin to manifest. Let abundance begin to manifest. Let abundance begin to manifest. Overflow. Overflow. Let the let go shut. La prana na shut. Let the let go shut. La praya ezania zodisya. Let abundance begin to manifest.
in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. In the Bible, the Bible says there were 5,000 people, 5,000 men, excluding women and children, are hungry. And Jesus said to the disciples, where shall we find enough food that they may eat? And someone said, even if we buy for this amount, it will not be enough. They were thinking on what they have. And Jesus does not think based on what you have. There is a saying that when God gives you a vision, He's not checking your budget. He's checking your faith. Because God will never give you a dream that you have the ability to fulfill. The natural ability. He will always give you a dream, a vision that is bigger than you. Because he wants you to understand you will not achieve this by your strength. You will achieve it by his strength. So the moment you begin to learn to rest in the place where you shine, to the place where what you have is in high demand. Amen. And I decree over your life tonight, the Lord will begin that in manifestation in your life. Amen. The Lord this month, from this first day of October, the Lord begin to order your step to the place where what you have is in demand. Amen. The Lord will lead you to the place where what you have is celebrated. Amen. God will take you to the place where you are honored. I decree that the Lord is moving you away from a place of management into a place of abundance. Amen. God is moving you from a position of lack to a position of more than enough. Amen. God is moving you from the place of sickness to the place of divine health. Amen. God is moving you from the place of confusion to the place of abundant knowledge. Amen. And if you believe this, shout a louder amen. amen. Shout it loud and clear. Amen. Shout it on top of your voice. Celebrate him, celebrate him in his family, in his family, in the name of Jesus. Take your sin for God, take your sin. I want you to understand that God wants you to have this in your heart, that he is taking you to a place where what you have is in high demand. Amen. So beginning from today, have this in your mind. God will order my step to a place where I am needed. I no longer have to bear. I no longer have to struggle. Are you getting this? When people need what you have, they are willing to give you what you want for what you have. Are you getting this? When they need what you have, they are willing to give you what you want for what you have. The only time you struggle to get from people is because what you have is not needed. When you have something that is in high demand, people are willing. So the Lord will take you to that place where what he has put in you is in demand. Amen. And you will no longer have to struggle. You will not have to beg. You will not have to borrow. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Celebrate Jesus once again. Give us God. Have you been blessed? If you're blessed, shall I am blessed? Shall I am blessed indeed? Shall I am blessed indeed? Look at your never say where there is trust. Where there is trust, there is rest. Look at the other person say the same thing to them. Where there is trust, there is rest. Tell it to the person behind you. word for rest can be peace. Amen? There is peace. And Jesus said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Twice. Amen? Peace I leave with you. Now my peace I give unto you. Are you getting this? So let this sufficient grace conference 
bring you to that place of peace. It's no longer about your strength. It's not about your labor. It's about his love. So that seat that I did that song, I don't remember who it was, was in spirit. To match your excess love. Who did that song? Three special number. Sister? Did you give a testimony today? What was that testimony? The short version. They're gonna pay for her after the altar conference. Altar conference is a conference where you hand it over to God. Raise altars and begin to speak for you. And usually after altar conference, this is a fact proven in this ministry. Every time we have altar conferences, afterwards, people begin to give testimonies of manifestation of delayed expectations. Something they've been believing for, waiting for, they start to manifest. Because now there is a higher power speaking for you. There is a voice speaking for you. So every one of you, those of you that have raised your sacrifices, I decree also over your life that your expectations manifest speedily Amen. in the name of Jesus. If you are here, maybe you hear it for the first time and you also want to raise your altar, you can do that. Amen? You can do that. Think, plan, pray. And come and say, no, I want also to raise an altar. We're going to pray over you and you begin to say manifestations. Somebody shout amen. amen. Lift up a seed in your head. We're going to pray in your hand. On the altar, lift up a seed in your head. You'll be blessed by the servants. You'll be blessed by the Lord. Bless my word with all the students just need to take up something and just lift it up and we're going to make declaration. Take up something in your head. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I now know how much you love me. I trust your love for me. And henceforth, I refuse to stress. I refuse to panic. I refuse to doubt. I refuse to be troubled. In the name of Jesus. I release my seed in agreement with the word I will see tonight. Let this word begin to produce in my life. Did you testify? Today you did. 
Did you testify, sister? You did? Glory to God. God settled them with what? Joy. Amen. And I remember she said to me, she wants to, our sister in red, she said she wants to go home. Right? And I said, Sure. God wants to give you a job. Amen. And we prayed over it, prayed about it, and God gave her a job. Right? He enjoyed the job. <laughs> so God is a God that gives jobs. He doesn't just give you a job because He wants to give you a job. He gives you a job because He wants you to enjoy abundance. Amen. So come. Both of you come here. We want to pray for them, for God to give them what? Abundance. Amen. Yes, let's stretch our hands to us. Stretch our hands to us. I want to pray for them. Imagine a situation where you have, you, you are sustainable and comfortable. When you talk about God, there is a kind of confidence you have. Amen. So stretch your hands towards the men. Decree in the name of Jesus that let the Lord work a miracle in their life. By the next conference, let them testify. Lift your voice and give a prayer. Give a prayer. In the name of Jesus, by the next conference, let them testify. Begin to pray. We're going to give them a job. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the daughters. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Do it for them. Do it for them. In Jesus' mighty name, pray. Let your testimonies be released speedily. In Jesus' mighty name.
still coming, come, come and join them. Don't let the opportunity to be a part of what God is doing pass. So come, tell them. Are we up to 10 now? Yes. Huh? Yes. Who's the 10th person? How many people are in the back? Three. We are nine. nine. You are part of it. All right. Can we talk about 10 persons? Lift your hands. Ten of you. Ten of you. Ten of you. Father, we pray. Your word says your grace is sufficient. Pray for your daughters and your son standing in front. And I know for a fact that there is something troubling them. I know that there is a part of their life where an area where they're experiencing persecution, where they're experiencing tribulation. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I decree your grace becomes sufficient in that area. Whether it is their finance, their health, their business, their marriage, their relationship, their family, their vision, their mindset, their education, whatever it is, Lord, let your grace become sufficient. Let your grace become sufficient. Lord, in the name of Jesus, let tangible testimonies manifest. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit of God. I decree that what you will start in your life will be known by many. Amen. And people will give you thanks for what you have done in their life. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed? Amen. Let's write on the and share it with us. That's right. Father, we thank you for your sons and daughters. And we pray that as we step out of here, our steps are ordered by you, our path is directed by you. I pray for everyone connected to this, that the word they have received will bless them indeed. The word they have received will bless them indeed. The word they have received will bear fruit and produce in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, also for our viewers that are tuned in from around the world in the name of Jesus. Let testimonies manifest in their lives. Let there be financial explosion in this month of October. I decree that everyone under the sound of my voice receives tangible testimonies every day of this month. And we have a cause to celebrate. In Jesus' mighty name.